Happy Victorious Day to all the beer fans all over the world. Coming across as we are those right now, we want all of you to pay a very good attention because the Prime Minister is live again, trying to update all the beer fans all over the world on the latest victory and on the latest freedom commenting and going on right now. I want all the beer fans coming across this broadcast right now to begin to click the share button. Make sure you are sharing these informations right now. According to the Prime Minister, all the enemies of Bia France is in, is in trouble right now. All the enemies, all the saboteurs, and all the people that the Nigerian government have been paying money in order to sabotage and to jeopardize the works of Bia France. All of them is on race right now because God has exposed them. Chuku Kiko Biyama have been chasing them, and right now their yash has been opened. Which want all the Bia fans to begin to celebrate is the celebration day. And as once as we're about to join the Prime Minister on live right now, please share these informations and make it viral all over the world. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, Bia fans, Jewish people around the world. I welcome every one of you, journalists, media representatives. I can see some media, I can see some journalists here. I welcome every one of you. Ladies and gentlemen, the press, lovers and friends of the Afrans, and of course, friends of Israel. I welcome every one of you. Today we have seen another barbarism, terrorism, and of course, planned extermination of the Jews and Israel, the people of Israel. And from the history, we will never abandon the people of Israel. We will always stand with Israel, not just standing with Israel, but as we stand for Israel, we stand for ourselves. What our ancestors, forefathers, and of course, our parents did for decades, centuries ago, we have come to continue in the path of truth and nothing but truth. The people of God, we can never ever be threatened or subdued to abandon our faith, belief, and origin. We will never succumb to threat, never succumb to terrorism. We will never abandon whom we are. in order to please few people. We will also never walk against our own. Israel, no matter the predicament Israel is going through today, they remain part of us. And I'm here not just to uphold the true identity of the Biafra people, not just to follow the footsteps of our ancestors, but to make sure that history will remember us in due time. We have seen the paradigm shift after the recent attack against Israel on the 7th of October, the terrorist attack. And that terrorist attack Whoever supported supporting evil, not just evil, 
but supporting terrorism. It was a pure terrorist attack on Israel, killing innocent women and children. And there you see countries like Nigeria aiding and supporting Hamas for that terrorist attack on the 7th of October. I am not here to defend Israel on the right of Palestine to self-determination, on the right of Palestine to independence or whatever. But I'm here to stand with Israel and condemn the terrorist attack on Israel. It can never ever be accepted. It is unacceptable, killing children, abducting women, raping them, butchering them in the street of Israel, as we witnessed on the 7th of October, to go down in the history, and those who support this evil will never have peace in their various countries. Mark it. Today, they are planning attack on Israel in Nigeria. You know, one thing about this whole politics, evil politics going around in the world today, is that many people lack information. People don't actually know what is going on around them. Like many do not understand there is something called Israel in Nigeria. And when you make a post calling the attention on Israel in Nigeria, many people will be asking which one is Israel in Nigeria again. There is a serious planned attack against Israelis in Nigeria. The Israel ambassador, the Israeli embassy, is under serious threat. Their life remain in imminent danger. And of course, the reason we are making this public is because whenever we expose the terrorist government of Nigeria, they will always go into panicking, and that will also truncate the plan to execute the terrorist attack against Israel in Nigeria. By this singular exposition, their camp is already in disarray because they do not know where this information and intelligence is leaking from. So the planned attack, we have actually somehow truncated it. But that does not mean that they're not going to plan and they're not going to retrategize and come back again. We are just making this particular space today to call the attention of Israel in Nigeria and assure them that so long as we exist in Biafra land, there is a safe place for them to be evacuated to immediately if there is any attack against them in Abuja. Biafra land, the old eastern Nigeria, that is a safe place for them. We will evacuate them from Abuja within four hours of notice. Do not take this particular intel for granted because it will happen. We may not be able to get the second intel when they plan the second attack, but this particular first attack, believe me, the exposition may have destroyed their intention and the intent to commit terrorism against Israel in Nigeria. And for those who don't know history. This is not the first time Nigeria government and Nigeria state are attacking people inside Nigeria on the issue of Israel and Palestine. This is not the first time. There is a history of terrorist attack whenever the conflict in the Middle, in the Middle East escalate. The people, the Biafrans in the Northern Nigeria have always made to pay the price of what is happening between Israel and Palestine. So when I come here to speak, I am speaking to maintain the integrity, the trust of the ancestors of the Biafra people. They have killed enough Biafrans in Nigeria whenever Israel and Palestine conflict escalate. And I want to inform all of us today that since the history of killings of Biafrans in the northern Nigeria, this year 
or this particular conflict is the only one in the history where the Biafra has not been attacked and their businesses destroyed in the northern Nigeria. We are not going to deny who we are. And that is why it is very imperative for people to understand we can never be in one country because they see us as the Jews. And we are the Jews. We are not denying being, being the Jews. And that's why we can never be part of an entity like Nigeria. And today, they use gun and the barrel of gun to force us into being one country. The message I have come to pass across to Nigeria, the terrorist state of Nigeria today, is that if any Biafra is killed this time around in the northern Nigeria, in the name of Israel is fighting Palestine, or in the name of Iran has uh, launched attack in Israel, and any Biafra is killed in the northern Nigeria, or their businesses destroyed, and people butchered as usual, they normally do, we will cut Nigeria into two. Those who understand what I mean know what I mean. We will cut Nigeria into two to start with. And those that will be the side of the southern Nigeria will be made to face the music. This is not the time. You use what is happening in the Middle East to kill us in the northern Nigeria. We will continue to stand with Israel. The Jews are us and we are the Jews. We become an inseparable and because we find ourselves in the amalgamation of Nigeria, will not make us to deny who we are. A lot of people will say that Israel doesn't need help. We have made it very open. We will offer the Israeli government when the war goes to the ground troop, needing the ground troop, we will offer 15,000 men to Israel. The Biafra government is ready. We know that the war is still going on there, you know, with the rockets and all that, but whenever it gets to the ground troop, when ground troop is needed, Biafra will provide 15,000 men to support Israel. A lot of people will say, you protect yourself first. We are protecting ourselves. Are you not seeing it? Have you not seen how we protect ourselves? Have you not seen that for the very first time in the history of the Islamic State of Nigeria, uh, the people uh, shouting for Biafra is being declared wanted? Tag the terrorist? Have you not seen it? It means that we are fighting and also protecting ourselves. It is not easy for them to kill like they usually do. So they have seen that the new generation of Biafra are those you don't mess around with. So do not worry. If you are not a Biafran and worried about us promising 15,000 men to Israel if the time, when the time comes for the ground troop, do, don't worry about us. Worry about yourselves who is being butchered in your various localities in Nigeria. Worry about yourself whom your people are living in IDP camp in the Middle Belt, in the Northern Nigeria, in the Southwest. Don't worry about us. We are not in IDP camp. For the fact that Biafrans are not living in IDP camp means that we are protecting and defending ourselves very well. And today, we can boast of 100, over 130,000 men of the Biafra Liberation Army, the Biafra Resistance Fighters. All we lack is more weapon. That's all. We will overrun Nigeria when the time comes. So do not worry about the pronouncement of 15,000 men to Israel when the time comes. The reason you have not seen the heavy impact of the Biafra forces is something that I will not share here. So if you hear us making this pronouncement, do not worry about us, especially if you are not a Biafra. Worry about your region, worry about your state, 
worry about your people that have been displaced by Nigeria sponsored terrorism, that have been displaced by all the terrorists that have invaded Nigeria, and you are only concerned is what their friends are doing and how they are fighting their freedom. We are people of God, people that have covenant with God, God of Israel, God of Moses, God of Elijah. These are the people we are. So you cannot believe what we believe in. We have different belief. We have different religion. The covenant of God remains the covenant of God. So do not worry about us. Worry about yourselves that have been subjugated, subdued by the Nigeria terrorism. You have been subdued by the terrorist state. You have been subdued by the terrorism of the Nigeria state. You have been subdued by the terrorist organization called Nigeria Army, Nigeria Police, and all other Nigeria security agents. They are all terrorists. You have been subdued by them. So you don't have the right to even ask questions. You don't have the right to protest. If you don't like anything they are doing, you will get killed. So we are not accepting that particular threat as subjugation or subdue. We don't accept it. You can't subdue Biafra people. And that's what you people, many of you don't like. Today, in Enugu, a repented Boko Haram who was recruited into Nigeria military lynched a woman in the barrack. Of course, they will come to deny as usual. You think they will come and accept it before? You come, you think that the Nigeria terrorist organization called Army will come and say, Oh, we did, yes, uh, we are investigating it. The guy, it was a Boko Haram and he killed the woman. No, they will deny up to the last minute. Even in the Okoma community, when they went there to attack the community, burn the community down, did they not come to deny it? They were the ones sharing the video to prove how brutality, what brutality they have meted to the people of Okoma community. When the heat get too hot, they deny it. They deleted the post they made. So who doesn't know Nigeria Army as a terrorist organization? It means that you don't know the history of Nigeria. Biafra has come. And this year, the declaration of Biafra is happening. After that, we will have the right to do anything as a government. Believe me, after this year, it can never remain the same. So let them escalate whatever they are doing in the Middle East so that the eye of the world will be out of Nigeria. I am so happy. I will be here to also answer questions to those who may have some relevant questions pertaining the security, the security threat on Israel in Nigeria and, of course, the proposal for the Biafra government to provide 15,000 men whenever the time is right for the ground troop if Israel needs it. Thank you. And uh, the media team, you can take charge from here. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ebu PM. Uh, Minister Information, please uh, come up. Mazi Sani. Yes. They will, Mochinoke, they will, Prime Minister. Uh, what a good leader will do in time of war is to give hope and assurance to the people. That is what you've just done. And the Biafran people are very happy to have you as their Prime Minister because you have just done what a leader is supposed to have done. Biafra stands with Israel from now until eternity. Yes, my minister, Vam Vam Vam, we are here again. Over to you, please. Okay, thank you very much, uh, my this Sonia Parawa, our uh, able minister of information. Greetings to our our uno of Biafra land, Prime Minister, His Excellency Mazi Simon Ekba. We appreciate you, Mazi. And uh, fellow Biafrans and friends of Biafra and the media and journalists that are watching right now, please, uh, we're going to be bringing you in. As I bring you in, please do not hesitate to raise your hands and um, uh, 
and they bring a very relevant questions to the Prime Minister as uh, regarding the topic uh, we have here and uh, immediately you are going to get answers. And please uh, note that you have just 60 seconds to do that as we have um, uh, almost uh, a thousand people, close to a thousand people watching right now and uh, participating in this uh, space. Please, as you're coming in and you have a very relevant question uh, as to what is happening right now and how we are related to this, please bring your question up and you have 60 seconds to do that. We already have people in the room. And uh, let me quickly start with um, Ifai Madumere. Ifai Madumere, uh, even though your hand is not up, I just pick you. And while I wait for others to raise their hand, you have 60 seconds. If you have a question, please go ahead and bring it. Yeah, I greet everyone. Good morning, good afternoon. Honorable PM, I greet you. My question is this. It goes to our leader, Mazinam De Carlo. Is there any mechanism too in securing that facility, that arena where he's been held? Should in case if any of these uh, interior plans is also geared towards that environment? That's that's my question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any issue about the our leaders' uh, detention? is something very sensitive at this point and for that reason i will not address it but let me tell you the Afrans are ready to secure him and rescue him from that place he was the one and he's still the one delaying us thank you i'm sure you got that uh, that last uh, the answer he gave you which you should also begin to ponder upon and uh, we move. Thank you, uh, if I uh, please uh, quickly bring your question. Uh, rage and fury, please. You have 60 seconds to do that. All right, thank you very much, my people. Greetings. My name is uh, Rage and Fury. I'm a proud Isoko Biafran. And first, before I, I ask my question, I want to say a very big thank you to the Biafra Agbada Guru, that is the Biafra Thunder that strikes the zoo from all corners you understand thank you very much sir, for the great work you are doing for us on behalf of all the soko and urubu biafra i want to say we are pleased with what you are doing for us and we are totally behind you thank you very much my question is this and uh, is us aware that nigeria is funding hamas and how does the us see hamas do they see them as terrorist organization or what and if U.S. is aware that Nigeria is funding Hamas, why U.S. is funding Nigeria? Because we see the evidence when they supply their weapons to Nigeria to come and kill us in Biafra, and our army neutralize them and seize those weapons. So those are those are my questions, my Prime Minister. I don't know if you can answer. Th thank, thank you. you thank you very much. U.S. is aware of everything. Everything. Are you surprised? Is it not the same U.S that has sent almost how many billion dollars to Iran? Are you not aware of that? The same Iran is now attacking Israel. The same America turn around, want to stop Iran. That is where I made a tweet in the afternoon. If you go there, you will see America is funding the people that turn around to kill them, their own citizens, or that will kill their own citizens. That's what is going on. And this is being spearheaded by Obama. When this man, when Biden was coming to power, we warned that it is he is not going to be the president of America. That is going to be somebody like Obama that will be behind the scene. And every policy you see today is the policy of Obama, pro-Islamic state. First, I want to share a story of how ISIS was created. Many of you do not know how ISIS was created. ISIS was created from the war in Syria. Now, let us go back to the time of Gaddafi in Libya. What happened, in Gadda what happened to Gaddafi? America funded, under Obama, funded the rebels in Libya to remove Gaddafi from power. 
America pumped under Obama, pumped weapons to North Africa. They were supervising it. They were blockade. They closed the airspace. They declared no fly zone. And they were using the Mediterranean Sea, shielding these rebels who, do they, who they don't know who they are. But you know, the people funding them knows who they are. But the average American, average European do not know who they are. They funded people they know nothing about. What happened? They succeeded. They succeeded in killing Gaddafi. After they killed Gaddafi, what happened? The entire weapon was moved to the Sahel region of Africa. From Sahel region, they moved it to the West African, to Nigeria. Boko Haram began to use the weapons that America supplied to rebels in Libya. So the war was not actually about Libya. It is about, it was about the destabilization of North Africa, which will further give birth to what you see today, Boko Haram weapons everywhere. That is why, as Obama apologized to Africa for that. Are you going to compare the time of Gaddafi and now? The answer is no. So what is the essence of arming rebels in Libya? Now, can you just answer me? Can you, you know, can somebody explain the reason for funding army rebels to kill Gaddafi in Libya? It is to destabilize Africa. That is number one. Number two. When the war of Syria started, before the war of Syria started, it is the same thing they did in Libya that they wanted to do in Syria. They funded and armed rebels in Syria. They said, oh, we are not going to go, our ground troop will not go there. So who are you funding? Who are you giving arms to? They don't know. But some of them know who they are. It was from there, those people that supplied arms to Obama, supplied arms to Syria, split it into three. One of them become the ICC today. The other two engaged the Syria, uh, engaged the, uh, the, uh, the NATO. The other, other one fought alongside with Assad, the Syria government, and Russia came to help them. As that was going on, Turkey was buying oil from the ISIS. One of them who controlled who controlled the oil in, in, in Syria. And Russia was not happy with that. Several times, if you all can remember when the airplane was shut down. And Russia accused Turkey of buying the gas from ISIS in order to fund them. This was going on. Everybody, those who I were interested in reading what is going on, uh, know what I'm talking about. That was how ISIS came on board, using America's arms supplied by Obama. So Donald Trump came. Many of us who understood what is going on and how Donald Trump can stop this nonsense, we supported Donald Trump. We supported Donald Trump because. He was the right man then. But many people was calling Donald Trump a racist. He hates blacks. We saw beyond that. We saw beyond a man who was just abusing blacks. It was not just about abuse. We saw something beyond abusing blacks. And by the way, was there anything he said about blacks that were not true? Is there anything he said about Nigerian criminals that were not true. Is it that Nigeria is a shithole? Is it a lie? Or is it because it was coming from him? So, you know, nobody can come out and say what Trump said was a lie. But why was a white man saying it? Why is it was a, a white man who said it? That was the problem. And that is the hypocrites, political correctness that we see ourselves today. Has destroyed your human dignity, 
the morality we have as a people. You are saying it. You are wrong. You are the wrong person to say it. We supported Donald Trump because of that. And when he came on board, what happened? ISIS disappeared. Donald Trump dealt with them. And Obama policy, Obama structure for the Islamization was truncated by the policy of Trump. Many people don't. This I'm telling you today, please go back and reflect and see what I'm telling you. Everything was truncated by Donald Trump foreign policy. ISIS was wiped away from Iraq to Afghanistan, Taliban, to Syria. Everywhere was calm. And then they use media to destroy Donald Trump, just like they are trying to destroy me. <laughs> they use media. Every media was against Donald Trump. They tell you he's sick, he's, uh, he's too flamboyant. Is it sickness? Is this flamboyant we are talking about? We are talking about the foreign policy that have restored peace globally. He went far as far as even talking to the North Korea. He visited there. There was a process of restoring peace globally. And then Obama and their multinational corporation came back again and started campaigning for Joe Biden. We warned the Americans. They say it was not our business. What's our business in American politics? We warn them as is what is to come today. All of them are crying. All of them are crying for Donald Trump. All of them are crying that Joe Biden is this and that. That is exactly what is going on today. Joe, Joe Biden administration funded Iran up to six billion or more than six billion dollars. The same Iran is attacking Israel. The same America is defending Israel against Iran. What does that tell you? So if you ask question about how America is funding Nigeria, it is kind of funny. Because these are people who have ulterior motive that only them know. And like I said, there is somebody behind the scene and the person is Obama. Obama is Biden, Biden is Obama. So the question of what they do and give money or aid to these countries is just for formality. They turn around, use that money to fund the attack against the American people. And that is exactly what is happening in Nigeria today. The same American general came to the Sahel region. He was making comment about Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda, Iswab, that it is only in Nigeria that have been able to work together. And what they are looking for is to make Nigeria a safe haven so they can now begin to attack the West and America. And he said they are very sure that this is what they want to do, but they don't know when this particular attack is going to start. The same America today can watch how Hamas came to Nigeria and a platform was given to the leader of Hamas and the land has been allocated to them in the northern Nigeria to mine Californium to raise money to fight against Israel. The same America is watching Biafra, see how Biafra is going to do. Instead of them, to Amos, we are not Islamic rebels. But you see, because we carry Bible like them, they will not arm us. Because we are peaceful like them, they will not arm us. They rather arm Taliban. They rather arm terrorists in Libya. They will arm rebel terrorists in Syria. But when it comes to Christians, they will never add, they will never arm you. So what are they trying to let you know? They are trying to let you know that you must be radical before you can get the attention of the world. Go and ponder on what I have just said today. Have you seen them arming all Islamic rebels around the world? But when it comes to Christian rebels, if they call us rebels, because that's what they call us. When it comes to Christian separatists, they will let you to suffer. They will allow you to kill yourself for 30 years, like they did in Sudan. In Sudan, North and South Sudan, 30 years of fight before they now say, come and have your freedom. But when it comes to Islamic rebels, you will see America funding them. They did it to Taliban. Everybody knows the history of Taliban. It was to use Taliban to fight Russia. He failed. 
They have done it to Libya, he failed. They did it to Syria, he failed. But when it comes to Christians, us, we are Christians, we believe the same faith with America. We have the same constitution with America. We believe in human dignity with America. They will turn back on us. So, and the person engineering this current America policy is Obama, pro-Islamic state. Thank you. Uh, please, sir, my prime minister, in 30 seconds, please, sir. I don't know if I can speak in 30 seconds. Go ahead. What, from, what, from what you just explained, sir, and I realize that America in secret is funding terrorists to take over people's land so that they can form alliance with these terrorists after the terrorists have conquered and take away the resources of the people. That is my understanding. But I want to say to America and Britain that no matter how thick the darkness is, it cannot overshadow the light. The light is the truth. And what makes you a powerful nation is your ability to defend the truth, not the amount of the weapons of war that you have. But if America has chosen under Joe Biden to turn their back against the truth, to turn their back against justice, this will mark the beginning of America and Britain's fall. Thank you very much, my Prime Minister, for the explanation. God bless you, sir. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Rage and Fury. And I uh, can feel the rage in you there. Thank you very much. We move and I uh, appreciate our Prime Minister. That was a very detailed explanation and uh, uh, the, even the deaf could hear it. That, the, that package truth that cannot be covered. Thank you so much. And I will go very fast, please. Uh, 60 seconds to you. Uh, Marzi, China, Madam, please quickly bring your question. 60 seconds. Okay. Uh, good evening, my Prime Minister. Prime Minister of the Afro people. We, we greet you, sir. We, see, we are seeing your handwork and thank you so much for standing up for this wonderful, uh, for our, bro our wonderful brothers as well. And I just want to say, I ask you something, please. Can you please pardon us uh, and uh, tell that people that, uh, that doesn't know the relationship between Biafra and Israel, can you please share more light about the relationship between us? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, as everybody who may, or those who may not uh, understand the relationship between us and Israel, we are the descendant of the Jews, and we are part of the Jews of Africa. A lot of people, a lot of researchers have actually said that Israel came from us, that the Jews came from us, and that we are the original Jews. So there has, a, there has been a lot of uh, uh, research you know, and, uh, uh, you know, scholar or opinion about Biafra, the descendant, uh, the people of the God. So we are, you know, I would say the original Jews. And having said that, during the time, even before the Biafra war, the state of Israel participated Although that time they played the double standard of supporting Biafra and at the same time supporting Israel, they're supporting Nigeria. And I wouldn't blame them because they worked based on the information available to them as at that time. But now a lot of secret is out. So they wouldn't do that double standard again. During the time of the Biafra-Nigeria war, over 50 Israeli Jewish organizations supported Biafra because they have come to understand that indeed we are the people of God, the descendant of Jews, like you have them in Ethiopia. You know, it is only in Biafra land that Nigeria succeeded in ridiculing the Jews, the Biafra people. But in Ethiopia today, for example, they recognized the Ethiopian Jews. But Nigeria and the Britain worked tirelessly to ridicule us before any, but any person, before any government in the world. They ridiculed us, they told them very bad things about Biafra. 
and in quest to silent and block whoever that will wish to help Biafra to gain independence from Nigeria. So the war we are fighting is the most difficult, the most complicated, the most difficult task. And our freedom will come like no other freedom in the history of mankind. And that's why we understand the complexity of the of fighting for our freedom to exit Nigeria. So, in a nutshell, the answer to your question or to address the people is that we, the Biafra people, are the people of Jews. And we are the descendant of Jews and we are the black Jews, just like you have them in Ethiopia. And the Ethiopia Jews, for example, were recognized by the Israeli government and they, are, they can travel to Israel without visa. They are treated just like them, you know, one of them in Israel, but not the people of Biafra, because Nigeria and Britain made it possible to block that particular opportunity and possibility. But we are not going to give up. We know that in time to come, we are not going to look for them, they will look for us. Just like today, as this war is going on, we know that now it is just a, technolog a technological war where the drone is doing its job, they are firing rockets and all that. But the time will come when they are going to need a ground, need a ground troop. Biafra will offer them 15,000 men. It may even increase to just to show that we will never forget our route. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I'm so happy with your question. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll say, uh, talking about uh, recognizing uh, Jews in in, uh, in in Ethiopia, I also want to tell you, sir. In Aguilera, I'm from Anamu, and I was grow, I was born and brought up in Aguilera. In Aguilera, there is a place called Enugu Aguilera. That Enugu Aguilera uh, was is where uh, uh, Eri was buried. If, if you want to. Uh, so, uh, to, uh, to our listeners, go to Genesis chapter 46, verse 16. You will hear, you will see where uh, Bible mentioned Eri. Eri who left uh, Egypt. So let me not go far from that place. So every year in Aguilera, we celebrate uh, Eri Day. And in that, uh, that day, Israel people used to come there. Some dwarf people who, uh, used to do uh, some rituals. And that place that Eri was buried, there, uh, there is a, a tree, tree uh, one tree that have three, uh, three uh, fruits. That is three trinity. It uh, that that tree grow up where it was buried. Thank you, sir. If you want to investigate, go to Aguilera. You will see it there. Thank you so Thank much, you my friend. Thank you very much. We know we know the area, you know, and we know the uh, the people of God uh, that are you know the history is very rich there. But I'm not here to share the history of uh, the kingdom or or the people in Aguilera and all that. Everybody knows that. But just for the people who don't understand why Biafrans are standing with Israel. We are not actually standing with Israel. We are standing for ourselves because we and Israel are the same. So so it is, uh, we were standing with Israel just because we found ourselves in different climes, different country, different zone. So standing with Israel is also standing for ourselves. We can never be wiped away and wiped out of the surface of the earth. Uh, you know, uh, exterminating Israel, annihilating Israel is not the same as annihilating us. Thank you. Thank you, PM. Uh, thank you, Chine Mere. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, as you go back to listening, and we bring up uh, national opinion. National opinion, your hand is up. Please, 60 seconds, bring your question. All right, greetings, everyone. Greetings. Mr. Simon Iba, greetings everyone on this space. Um, I just wanted to ask a little question. You know, this situation on ground has been there for many years. And if you go to Mazen and the Kano's profile page, you are going to see that the flag of Israel is hoisted on his his timeline. You know, to show you our our collaboration and our our togetherness with the people of Israel. So these um, attacks on Israel has come as a huge shock to us. So my question is, what is our defense mechanism right here in Nigeria? Because we are endangered. If you check last two weeks, there were reports of 
um, movement of the Shiites in Abuja, they were, um, you know, protesting about the Palestine and the whole distance. So what is our our defense mechanism? What defense mechanisms do you think are in place for Biafrans in case of any impending danger? Because, you know, just just I wanted to ask. Uh, of course, the defense mechanism is not what I'm going to share with you. It's an intelligent, it's an, uh, it's an uh, um, you know, it's a critical question. But what I can assure you is that during the time that we are killing us, whenever there is issue with Israel and Palestine, then we do not have liberation army. We don't have arms to defend ourselves. So that is difference today. That's why you have not seen any record of somebody being killed, Biafra being killed in the north, or their businesses being born. Because like I said, any day they do it this time around, we will divide Nigeria into two. We will cut Nigeria, not divide. We will cut it into two. And those who understand what I mean by cutting into two will understand me. Of course, uh, not to ordinary person in Nigeria, they will not understand. But the military, the terrorist organization called military knows what I mean by cutting Nigeria into two. We will cut it into two to start with. Thank you. Thank you so much, PM. Thank you, National uh, Opinion. We move, we move. Please um, make your question very quick and brief. Mazi Chidara, MNK, please uh, bring your question up very quickly. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening, my PM. I greet you, sir. Um, I want to say a very big thanks to you for coming up, you know, to you know, shed more light on what is happening. I just have a few questions to ask. Uh, we know that uh, Biafra remains envi enviable to other countries, just like you have likely said. We are not going to deny who we are. So what I want to ask is that, what is this? Uh, what if this uh, this war escalates? How will it contribute towards gearing or redeclaration of uh, of Biafra? Will it going to help us in the declaration of Biafra? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Of course, everything worked for good for them that love God. Have that answered answer your question? I didn't hear you clearly. It was it bricked I already. Said, I said, I said, De definitely it is going to work for the good of Biafra, for the freedom of Biafra. Like Bible said, everything worked for good for them that love God. And we are the people that love God. We are the people of God. Thank you. And also to the brother that asked question previously, that uh, Mazin Andikano had a, a, a Israeli flag, that uh, Mazin Andikano has a, a Israeli flag on his timeline. Yes, he does. He does have Israeli flag on his timeline, just like myself. If you go to my Twitter, to my ex, you will know that the star of David is there boldly. We're not hiding it. We're not shying away from it, from who we are. And in the Biafra flag today, you have the star of David boldly in the center of the sun. And so, but when he was kidnapped from Kenya, the people whom were following him, or the people he surrounded himself with, what did they do? They started attacking Israel. That should tell you enough. A lot you need to know. The people whom he was fighting Biafra with, who was praising him when he was in Israel, when he appeared in Israel, they were praising him, praising Israel. Immediately he was captured because they believe they have done it all. That he will never come out again. What did they do today? They are supporting Palestine. They are now abusing Israel. The same people are telling you about Biafra. And that is to show to you those who your en your enemies within yourself. So think about it. Thank you. 